That is Ken Kratzer for CBSI in Lower Manhattan. Today I get a chance to visit with a good friend, John Mustin of Wasabi Rabbit. Uh, he's the CEO, also a graduate of the Navy uh, Naval Academy and also a Navy Reserve Officer. And, John, um, you've got an interesting uh, background from the Navy and also as a CEO of an advertising agency. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into the advertising world. Oh, that's a great question, Ken. Thanks very much. And, and thrilled to see you today. Thanks for coming down. Uh, yeah, my background is a little non-traditional when it comes to uh, those of us in the advertising space. So, again, I went to the U.S. Naval Academy and stud studied systems engineering as an undergrad, and I later went on to study operations analysis while I was still an active duty officer. But it wasn't until I got out of the active duty Navy and went and received an MBA that I was exposed to the world of marketing and advertising. And I, and I knew then that there was an opportunity to marry what I loved about interacting with people with the quantitative skills that I had accumulated over the years and really bring those two together in an industry that uh, I look forward to going to work every day to, to, uh, to execute. So in the last couple of years, we've pulled together a fantastic team, uh, many of whom I've worked with before in other agencies, but some of whom I met for the first time when I brought them aboard here. And, you know, again, I'm, I wake up every day excited to come to work because I've got a great group that's doing great things for our clients. Very good. And uh, just tell us a little bit about... Uh some of the services that you provide for clients in the digital advertising world, uh, there's so many different channels today and ways to approach uh, digital marketing. Uh, how do you approach that for your clients? Uh, that's also another great question. So there's no question that digital is a very explosive growth, growth area right now, and particularly in the world of social. I mean, we're seeing a lot of fantastic innovations that allow us to learn about customers better. And, uh, you know, one of the great things about marketing for, for decades, in fact, for hundreds of years, has been uh, an appreciation for understanding interest and then seeing how that translates to decisions and actions on the consumer side. So what, what digital has allowed us to do today is to get better insight into what motivates consumers. And we know, for instance, that oftentimes people say things in surveys and in focus groups that may not necessarily be true. But in the digital space, particularly in the social space, we can see what people are actually doing. And so, you know, someone may say they're going to get up and work out five times a day, but the reality is we look at their, their social feeds and, and they're really only working out once a day. So anyway, we, uh, we're able to tap into that level of, uh, of detail and provide better marketing messaging on behalf of our clients. So, you know, that's just one example of uh, how digital has, has changed the nature of what we used to do in TV and radio, uh, ultimately to allow us to give better marketing messages to our clients. And you talk a lot about uh, some of the fundamentals about starting campaigns small, uh, finding what's working, what messages are resonating. How do you approach uh, a client assignment? Well, it used to be, and again, we're talking about uh, decades ago, that you would say we have a hypothesis and we're going to dedicate hundreds of thousands of dollars to building a TV commercial. And the cost of media and the cost of production would consume that budget entirely. Well, today, again, using digital channels and online marketing methods, we can, we can create a number of different hypotheses that we can test at relatively modest budgets and determine what's really working and then eliminate those things that don't work and focus more on those things that do work before we get into video production and uh, TV commercial development. So, you know, what we love about the digital channels is that everything is 100% attributable. And that means every dollar we spend, we can see how effective it is and what's working. So then we can apply that to the messages that we're going to put into video and TV if necessary. And talking with John Mustin, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about one of the questions that comes up in our world of banking quite often and in working and positioning a brand in banking or financial services, online, social media, is you tend to get a lot of customer comment, both good and bad. What is your thoughts about addressing the customer comment that an institution or brand receives through social media? Well, social media obviously is, is still a rapidly evolving um, uh, media for, for all kinds of consumers. In the financial services industry, though, there are FINRA, FINRA regulations that are going to define the level of disclosure and the kinds and ways that uh, the disclosures can be made. So I would say that a financial services response is going to be very different than a consumer package response. But the reality is brands that seek to be authentic in their interaction with consumers want to, to allow those negative comments to, to exist. And, and rather than uh, censor or edit them, I would say that every one of those comments is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your authenticity and demonstrate the level of commitment to the customer service and do it in a way that others can appreciate. So 
if you see a negative comment on a Facebook page or on a Twitter post, the best thing you can do is respond to it and respond to it in a way that shows how you think and how you treat your customers. Don't delete it. It's, uh, it's best for you to, uh, to, to find the silver lining in that opportunity. Great advice. Uh, uh, John Mustin, I said earlier, you're a uh, Navy Reserve officer, a uh, graduate of the Naval Academy. Uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, one of the questions we work with veterans on is transitioning from the military into, uh, into uh, private business opportunities and possibly being entrepreneurial like you are founding as a founder of your own company. What are some of the keys uh, for veterans uh, leaving the military and going uh, to work commercially? Well, that's, that's a wonderful point. And I tell you, at, at this point, after uh, you know, over a decade of, as a nation at war, we're finding that more veterans than ever before are coming back into the civilian workforce. So you know, the thing that, that I've uh, mentored a lot of junior naval officers and sailors on is there are things that we take for granted by being in the military. And, and I can speak most, uh, most specifically about the Navy, but I've certainly worked with many in the Air Force and the Army and the Marine Corps and Coast Guard as well. And, and that is we're trained to lead. And so those leadership fundamentals that are applicable to your life in the military are equally applicable to life in corporate America. And you may not walk in the door as the captain or commanding officer of a corporation, but you're certainly going to have an influence over a team. And, you know, it may be a matrix organization where you're a peer, or it may be something where you literally have direct reports. And the way that you treat your folks in the military is the way that you're going to want to treat your folks in your company. And so, so don't think that because you're not wearing a uniform that there's some difference in how you should manage. Because, honestly, what I've found to be the most effective leadership tools uh, that, I, that I bring to bear every day in my company are the things that I learned even as a junior officer, a mid-grade officer, and now as a senior officer. So, you know, the, the reality is it's what we learned and appreciated in the military is very applicable to success in, in the corporate world. And, John Mustin, how, again, can uh, anyone who's interested in your company find out more? Well, I would invite you to come check out our website. It's wasabirabbit.com, and um, we're very active on our social properties, so look for us on Tumblr, look for us on Twitter and on Facebook. And then lastly, if you want to remember uh, the, the crazy name, you can just say, I'm thinking about that agency that's hot and fast. Okay, John Mustin, CEO of Wasabi Rabbit in New York City and a Navy Reserve officer. Thank you for your service and best wishes on your uh, three-year-old company. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Good to see you. This is Ken Kratzer in Lower Manhattan uh, for CBSI.